This is Frank Lavaca and Joy Erickson, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about making an oral presentation. One of the important things that we've always said to students is that you have to plan your presentation, prepare the talk that you're going to do, and then prepare yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to really think about what you want to say because it's really about telling a story in some sense. Absolutely, and connecting with your audience because you are performing. Absolutely. Um, and knowing when, where, and how long you have, what are you going to use. At the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, we only let the students talk for 12 minutes. Right. And so they should practice that 12 minutes. I mean, that's very important because 12 minutes is 12 minutes. It's not right. 12 minutes and 10 seconds. No, no so it's 12 minutes. They will minutes. be stopped at 12 minutes. And also, I think important too, is that audience. You're performing mm -hmm. to a large auditorium. Of audience, whereas if you're in, like, say, a poster session at the JSHS or the Connecticut Science Fair, you're in an intimate setting when right. you're talking to two or three One people. And again, knowing that audience is really important. And some people in the audience might know what you're talking about, might be, you know, really an expert in it. So that's why you want to stay in your known territory, what you know, because there could be an expert out there. But also, there are other high school kids, people who have no idea what's going on and so you need to make sure that you say enough basic information that everyone can understand. Right. Accessibility is so important. Mm -hmm. And also how much to cover. Uh, I see a lot of students really speeding through their presentation because they, you know you did so much, you did research over six months, six weeks, but you have to pull out what parts of the story are really important. I want to showcase it. You can't say everything. So yes. what's the most important thing that you can tell your audience? And what will lead them through that story. Absolutely. Um, it's really important, I think, for students to keep it simple and well organized, but also to tell it from their their perspective. Why did they get interested in this? You know, what is why is this important to them? And I think that makes for a much more powerful story. Because if you can tell why, you know, you're a high school student, why you got interested in this or something extra that's really, that really hooked you in, then you can hook your audience in. Right. Um, and to be really enthusiastic about what you're saying. We've done this work for such a long period of time. You really want to showcase how excited you are about the work you did. It's hard work to do these kinds of projects. It is definitely hard work. So, and we, we had talked a little bit about practicing. So I think practicing what you're going to say is very important. Um, and you might feel silly repeating yourself, but I think it's important to say it once and then say it again. Right. And that way you really get your message out. And also people can connect, well, okay, she said she was going to say that at the beginning. Like I said that I was going to talk about preparing the speech and now preparing the speaker. So I'm saying it again that that's really important to do yeah, that. I think that's very important. And also you, you have slides. Think about keeping them simple and explaining them when they're up there. Right. No one wants to go to a session where you're reading slides. No. Because the whole point of an oral presentation is that it's oral. If That's we wanted right. a reading presentation, we'd just sit and read. We'd read and, a paper. And we don't want to get distracted by slides mm -hmm. that take away from that great talk that the speaker is going to do. Especially if they're too busy and somebody can't really figure out, like, what am I looking at? So keeping them simple but also explaining them simply. Right. And I keep saying that word simple because the clearer it is, the more people understand, the more that you can engage them. And when I've, when I've worked with students, I actually have a 25 rule, no more than 25 words on a slide. And it's very powerful to really, because that forces you as the speaker to decide what's important. Yes. And it also doesn't overload your, your audience member. And it's about being concise too. Yeah. You, you need to pull out what is the important thing. It's one of the reasons that we have you write an abstract is so that you can pull out what's important and what can you say. Now, there's different kinds of talking. Like right now, you and I are talking impromptu. We kind of know our subject, so we don't have that much for notes except for our slides. That's why you guys keep seeing me glance over because I'm looking at my slides. But that's an impromptu. Some people talk with cards and they have some of their notes on cards. If you do that, you need to number them. So kind of getting down to some details. I don't recommend paper because if you're holding paper, you're nervous and it shakes. Yeah. Um, 
and memorizing is good, but at least you should have that computer there for a backup. So you can use your computer as a backup. That way you can move a little bit more freely. Right. I just love watching TED Talks. And if you haven't seen TED Talks, you should go online, TED.com. Absolutely. And on the YouTube channel, the TEDx channel, mm -hmm. look at the way these people speak, how they engage their audience and how they're not clenching a podium. Actually, there are no podiums even in that setting, as is the case of the JSHS or the Connecticut Science Fair. You don't Absolutely. have that crutch. Yep. So if you see how those people are talking, that can give you uh, a good sense of how, how style in the presentation right. can be really effective. And I think that that's important to be relaxed and to practice being relaxed. Because um, if you practice something, it will start to feel good while you're doing it. Um, also, to one of the things that um, a colleague of mine put out is when we're doing these science presentations, we have to have a need. You know, what was the need for what you did? What was your approach? And what was the benefit to what you did? Because if you can't connect that to the audience and say, this is something that needs to be done, what we don't want is the person in the audience saying, well, who cares about that? Why should I care about that? You want them to feel connected and say, oh, this would be really important work, and this is what the need and the benefit, and this is how you improved, especially if you're doing an engineering project. How did you improve it? How did you make it better? Is it cheaper? Is it faster? Does it gather more photons? What does this project do? And where's that value? The value, absolutely. Um, and then we keep saying this too, practice, practice, practice. Do your speech for your pet animals, you know. Do your speech for you in your room. Do your speech for your family. Then keep making the audience a little bit bigger. You can't practice too and much. Make that audience vary too. Yes. Do it for an audience who doesn't understand what your topic is. When they're done, do they understand? Ask them those questions. What's your value statement? What did you do? What was your approach? What were your results? Make sure people understand right. what you're talking about. Even for yourself, take your iPhone or your iPod, do a little recording of yourself. Look back at it. See what you look like. Is yeah. that what you want to be conveying? Are you, are you pushing your glasses up? Are you pulling on your hair? Do you do something that's a little bit different? Right. So you can know. So videotaping is really important. And here's one of the other things is check your equipment that you have in your laptop. Even though laptops are pretty predictable and you should have a jump drive with your talk on it, you you will be given a, a podium. You should come up front if you're speaking at JSA just to find out what is it that I have up there? What can I do? Please everybody wear a mic. We're gonna be in big rooms. Um, but find out what is there and also have some kind of backup for yourself. Even if you print all of your PowerPoint slides onto pieces of paper, we have a camera that can do that as well. Um, I had an event this past Friday and the speaker, he's a national speaker, came to my event and said, oh, I don't have a laptop. He made assumptions that they were going to be there. And I said, well, you're a professional. You should be ready to go without a PowerPoint, without a LCD projector. And you need to know that you, have, that you can talk no matter what. Mm -hmm. So practice it with paper and do a little bit of memorization so you have a good handle on what you're doing. I think that's important. Um, and again, we were talking about the audience. So you know that there are going to be judges in there that are pretty good experts that we will have in the, in the audience. But you're also going to have your students. So think about how you connect with those. We had already talked about that. And remember that you're the expert. If you're giving this talk, this is what you're the expert on. But stay in known territory. This is especially important in the questions and answers. We have about five minutes of questioning, and this is where a lot is revealed to the judges because yeah. you could memorize a talk but not really know your subject. I, and I think, as a judge, and, mm -hmm. and we've both been judges, that is really where it comes down to. We yes. really look to the questions to really evaluate the students mm -hmm. in their work. So the questions are so important. They're very important. And here's an important thing I can say that sometimes a student has not gotten as high a place because of the way they answered a question. This is why it's important to stay in known territory. Um, a student was doing a research project on shellless embryos. That means, you know, usually chickens and ducks. 
live inside their shell until they hatch, but sometimes you take them out to look mm -hmm. at different aspects of the, the embryo growing. And this young lady was doing that, and, she's, and I said, well, tell me about other people that have done research with shellless embryos and what kind of results that they expected in, you know, I, I asked her a pretty specific question. And her response was, well, I'm the first one to do this shellless embryo um, technique. Um, I'd been doing it for five years. So, and, and in the lab that I was in, they'd been doing it even longer. So that was not a good response. She said she had done a literature search and didn't find anything. So really be careful about what you say and make sure that right. it's something you know. You're doing great work, but it's a piece of a larger body of work, most likely. And, and that and could have been fits in someplace. Yeah. And it could have been easily avoided to say, to my knowledge, and my knowledge is limited, I don't know of anybody else doing research. But to make a statement as strong as that, or this, a lot of students will say, well, this is the best thing for whatever cancer that they're studying. Or this is, they put way too much importance on their research. Yeah, I saw a project once, and the title was The Cure for Cancer. Yeah. And that would be exciting if it was, in fact, true, but once you dig a little deeper, well, it's a very small component of yep. one possible solution, which may have implications. Right. You don't want to overstate what you've right. done. And that's really important. And refer back to your work. Um, some of the presentations have been very strong if they could answer the question by saying, oh, well, that would be, you know, back in this slide. Or some people even have a couple extra slides right. if someone asks them something. And I think part of that too is recognizing your limitations. Mm -hmm. That's something our judges have said, both yes. like at Science Fair and the JSHS. Yep. When students know what the limitations of their work are, that's a very impressive thing to judges because they really have a better sense the student knows what they've done. And sometimes it brings the judges back to reality when a student says, well, I'm as a high school student, I was limited because of my resources. So this is what I was able to do. I would have liked to do this. Or in the future, I would like to do this. Or if I went back to that lab, I would like to go here and try to answer that question. Or somebody says, they sometimes want to stretch you a little. Well, what would you think would happen if you, know, you continued this study? It's OK to say, well, I'm not sure what would happen. But if I had to make a prediction or a hypothesis, I think this. Right. So that keeps you in known territory, but putting those limiters on your statements keeps you grounded in what you know. And I think that's really important. So again, to just review, you're going to plan your presentation. You're going to prepare the talk that you're doing. You're going to prepare yourself, and you're going to perform your talk. And in that performance, you're going to practice, practice, practice. And I think that really gets back to the heart of what you said. Yep. Let your audience know what you're going to do, do it, and then reiterate what you did. That's right. This is Frank Levanka and Joy Erickson at the Connecticut Science Fair and the Connecticut Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, thanking you for joining us about oral presentations.